welcome to the recap of the parliamentary election 2018. We start off the program with the chairman of the Central Voting Bureau, Mr. Jason Rogers. Good evening. Good evening, St. Martin. Since the November, when the national decree was actually uh, issued, announcing and calling the uh, parliamentary election 2018, me, together with my uh, members of the Central Voting Bureau, we have hit the road in organizing and making all the necessary preparations and ensuring that we have free, open, fair, transparent elections. And today is the day. The polling stations were open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And we would like to ensure everyone that those that were standing in line at 8 p.m., that they will still have had the opportunity to cast their votes. As you can see, I am not sitting here alone because organizing a election, an election is actually a team effort. I would like to introduce the, my colleagues of the Central Voting Bureau to you, St. Martin. As you can see here to my left, I have Bus from the Bus. Next to him, we have Cindy Marica. Next to me is my Vice Chair Lady, Tamara Richardson. In the back of us, we have Anastasio Baker. And next to him is Narissa De La Rosa. And next to her is Mr. Patrice Gums. Together, we form a strong team and in ensuring and organizing, like I said, fair, open, and transparent election in a very short period. However, we have actually ensured that such was all able to take place. Now, I have, um, in, uh, in doing so, we have had contact with all various stakeholders that we, not only the civil registry, but the police department, TLM, everyone, in order to ensure that this today is uh, basically possible. Now, I um, in come before coming here this evening, I have spoken with the police department, and the police department has indicated that throughout the entire day, it was a very smooth day, and there were absolutely no incidents. And for that, I would like to congratulate you, St. Martin, that we, indeed, we were able to have elections without any kind of incidents that took place. You may or may not have heard or noticed that we have had international observers here on St. Martin. The international observers were members from the IFES, the International Foundation for Electoral Systems. We had OAS. We had our colleagues from our counterparts from Curacao as well. And there were also uh, a few uh, parliamentarians from the second chamber of the Netherlands. Now, we welcome observers during the election because we feel that it's, an it's a transparent process. And of course, it's always possible for persons to take a look into our system. And what I would actually like to do is just as well that it will be a possibility to improve our system as well. We stand open for any kind of advice where possible because we would want to actually, you know, improve our system as well. So we welcome observers where that is concerned, where that point is concerned. Now, as we as the night progresses, we will be receiving the results. And as we, our bureau, receives the results from the various polling stations that we'll be calling in, we will make sure, we will ensure that those results are announced immediately. The following are the individual voting districts and the eligible voters per district. District 1, John Larmody Center with 976 eligible voters. District 2, Sundial School, with 1,323 eligible voters. District 3, the St. Martin Senior Citizen Recreational Center, with 1,354 eligible voters. District 4, the Sister Marie Lawrence School, with 1,530 eligible voters. District 5, the Dutch Quarter Community Center, with 1,521 eligible voters. District 6, the Milton Peters College, with 1,433 eligible voters. District 7, the Rupert Maynard Community Center, with 1,327 eligible voters. District 8, the St. Martin Academy, with 1,523 eligible voters. District 9, Butte Hotel, with 1,372 eligible voters. District 10, 
the National Institute for Professional Advancement, NEPA, with 1,351 eligible voters. District 11, the Charles Leopold Bell School, with 1,284 eligible voters. District 12, the Leonard Collar School, with 859 eligible voters. District 13, the Simpson Bay Sports Community Center, with 1,183 eligible voters. District 14, the Belvedere Community Center, with 1,435 eligible voters. District 15, the Melford Hazel Sports and Recreational Center, with 1,423 eligible voters. District 16, the Methodist Agogic Center, with 1,185 eligible voters. District 17, the Dutch Quarter Community Help Desk, Dutch Quarter Clinic, with 397 eligible voters. District 18, the Seventh-day Adventist School, with 946 eligible voters. District 19, Huis van Boaren, with 77 eligible voters. And District 20, the St. Martin Home, with 60 eligible voters. That brings the total amount of eligible voters for the parliamentary elections 2018 to 22,559. We now present an interview held with the Ombudsman of St. Martin, Dr. Nilda Ardain Lynch, who provided vital information on the Constitution of St. Martin. The Constitution is the basic law of a country. In fact, for St. Martin, we call it a constitution, but officially it's the state regulation. Why? Because we are not an independent country. And the word state regulation, in fact, already and tells us what that constitution is, what this important document is. It's the framework of how our country is organized. It gives us the basic principles that we, the people of St. Martin, will be guided by. And um, especially as today is election day, it is so important to stress we, the people, because a lot of um, our fellow citizens do not realize that the Constitution is in fact a document of us. The very first sentence in the Constitution state, we the people of St. Martin, we acknowledge we the contents of this document. And that document is telling us how we, the people, decide to organize the country and the principles by which we will be guided. And why do you think it's important for the people to understand that? Because uh, the Constitution is the document that is um, promulgated, that is made on behalf of the people, because yes, we the people, but then the question is, but who's we the people? I can't remember sitting in Parliament, you know, <laughs> making that law, uh, uh, accepting that document, and that is exactly what it all boils down today. We the people, we have the right to participate in the governing of our country. But of course, all 50,000 people cannot do that. So we go to the polls, where we elect 15 people to represent us. So we have to understand that importance of knowing what the Constitution is and what this very important day is. We often take the election day as something very light. Um, the people do like if it's a day of parties. No, it is the day that we, the people, based on the Constitution, express our free will 
to say who we want to rep have as representative. It's the same thing, you know, I, I, when I talk, I always like to go into very basic print, uh, uh, examples. We know on St. Martin we have a lot of succession land, for example, or, you know, somebody, a, a person passed away, they left, leave behind property, and there are about 30 heirs, yeah? And especially when you leave it from generation to generation, sometimes you have more. If you, as a family, don't organize and say how we want to go about in dealing with the property that grandma and grandpa left for us, it's confusion. However, the best thing is to elect, select a few people that, and you're gonna select the people that you like most or the people that you trust most or that they know something. When you, yeah, the ones that you trust, the ones that know, yeah, how it goes. You, you know something, uncle so and so, three or four people gonna represent the family, they will go to the notary and they take care of the business of the people, of the family, and it's the same thing. That's why it's important to, for the people to understand what the Constitution is all about and their constitutional rights. On a day like today, being election 2018, why should one go out and vote? I cannot stress more how important it is because according to our constitution, our state regulation, we said, in fact, once in the four years, we will go to the polls to elect 15 people to run, uh, to, to run our country, to represent us, to run our country. And saying running the country is, we give them the trust, to select and seven managers for the country, and who are those managers? Ministers. Our ministers, yes, to do the daily running of our business, our business of St. Martin. We just heard from the Ombudsman of St. Martin, Dr. Nilda Arde. We now go to an interview with Mr. Rolando Tobias and political analyst, Mr. Julia Romney. Now, I'm sure you have been doing your analysis. Um, that's the business you're in, and that's the reason why we ask you to join us this evening and share a little bit with us your projections, what you see happening. Uh, well, my projection, from the, looking at the data, clearly seeing that the, um, the UD, collectively, the UP and DP, they're holding their own. In most of the states that they are at the point or above, we have just seen in the national lines, they have somewhat fallen behind. And you notice the Legion came up with District 4, yeah, they have maintained or gone ahead some 60 uh, votes where Democratic Party or you United Democrats have fallen a bit. But on all the other states, all the other, um, other uh, voting districts, they have somewhat fallen behind or, or lost. And I think one interesting thing is to look at is to look at the Christian Party, the Samoan Christian Party. They have been maintaining their own. In most cases, their vote has increased by some fifty percent. So, so they are doing. They are doing pretty impressive. Pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty impressive. And overall, again, scanning the whole thing, and it's pretty early to tell. Yes. You really can't determine the final winner or loser. Yeah, because we have but some of the the bigger. Districts yes, that are still, still coming, are still coming. Yeah. and then you could look at the USP. It clearly seems to be the party that's losing a whole lot of, of their ground, and I guess what that could be contributed to the fact that they too have lost a number of their bigger vote getters. I mean, there was some concern as to whether or not, because of the unfortunate incident with the leader, that this might cause them to lose. Vote. And in that sense, I beg to differ, because I think 
uh, our political culture doesn't speak to that as such. They don't. They won't come up and talk about sympathy vote, so to speak, if they want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Political culture doesn't incorporate um, um, sympathy vote. Yeah. Basically, if they are for you, they'll be stronger for you. If they're weak, they'll be weak. Yeah. And again, the whole question of our political culture too is personal politics. And personal in so far, if I like the Christian party or I like person on the national lines, there's where, there. I'm going, yes. there's where I'm going to go. Oh, interestingly enough, you did mention the fact that the USP uh, lost several of its, its, its heavyweight candidates, if you want to call them that. They, they've seen several of their candidates leave the party, leave the party. and go to... I did not contest at all. I did not contest at all. And those, if you look at only four of them, they accounted for a, a very heavy chunk of votes that the, the votes. USP got USP in, in the last election. Mm -hmm. So indeed, that's a factor. And the party, the persons that they have now, for the most part, are not... They have not been in politics for that long. They're not that well-known. And again, we lean again on personal politics. You have to be well-known in order to... To, to get, those to kind get of a votes. significant amount of votes. Yeah. I want us to look a little bit, though, at the, at the voter turnout, 62% voter turnout. Mm -hmm. Now, the impression had been given that the voter turnout would be low. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion as an analyst on, on this? Of the, of the voter turnout, the 62% per mm -hmm. percent. Would I, you say that is still relatively high compared to the sentiments that mm -hmm. were out there? Based on the situation, but based on the, the political climate, I would say it's low. I mean, one would think that it would be much higher based on our political climate. There's much dissatisfaction among the electorate. And if you are dissatisfied, that's all the more reason you should go to the polls and, you know, and make, make your voice be heard. The following is the order in which the parties are placed in the voting ballot with their corresponding color. List number one. United Democrats, black. List number two, St. Martin Development Movement, gray. List number three, National Alliance, white. List number four, People's Progressive Alliance, orange. List number five, United St. Martin Party, blue. And list number six, the St. Martin Christian Party, brown. The proceeding was the order in which the parties are placed on the voting ballot with their corresponding color. We now close off this program with the chairman of the Central Voting Bureau, Mr. Jason Rogers, who provided the official results of the parliamentary elections 2018. What I'll do right now is over the course of the evening, you've been receiving the results from the various polling stations as they have been rolling in. But now I will give you the final results, final results in the sense of this evening, but they are preliminary results as the law prescribes five days after the day of election, the electoral of the Central Voting Bureau will hold a public meeting in order to validate these, um, these results. Now, the, uh, I first of all would like to, um, to announce the results per political party. Now, the United Democrats, they received a total of 5,749 votes. The SDM received a total of 416 votes. The National Alliance received an amount of 4,139 votes. The PPA received a total of 280 votes. The U.S. Party received a total of 1,788 votes. The St. Martin Christian Party received an amount of 1,181 votes. Brings us to a total of 13,553 valid votes that were casted. The amount of blank votes that were casted are 98, while the amount of invalid votes that were casted amounts to 303. In total, the amount of ballots votes that were casted were 13,954. So I can inform you that the turnout for this year's parliamentary election amounts to 62%. 
once we look at the uh, turnout of the parliamentary elections back in 2016, that was 65%. Hence, we have a decrease in turnout of 3% in 2018. Now, with those results, we have the seat allotments as follows. We have for United Democrats, we have seven seats. SDM, zero seats. National Alliance, five seats. The PPA, zero seats. The U.S. Party, two seats. And the St. Martin Christian Party, one seat. So I will repeat the seat allotments based on the preliminary results are the United Democrats, seven seats. The St. Martin, the SDM, I'm sorry, zero seats. The NA National Alliance, five seats. PPA, zero seats. U.S. Party, two seats. And the SMCP, one seat. Now, it will be, of course, very, hand, uh, um, very handy if you would know what the individual votes are, and that I would like to make that known to you as well, C. Martin. Starting first with the United Democrats, the preliminary results, as far as we have right here, is for candidate number one, Theodore Halliger, an amount of 1,289 votes, Sarah Westcott Williams, 566 votes, Franklin Myers, 402 votes, Emile Lee, 259 votes, Chanel Brownbill, 270, Claret Connor, 201, Siddharth Bishlani, 294, Tamara Leonard, 233, Barry Heerlings, 258, Jules James, 213, Leona Marlin Romeo, 195, Yurin Wouter, 116, Van Hugh C. De Weaver, 189, Rhoda Arundel, 147, Hassani Ellis, 101, Angelique Ramu, 94, Kevin Mangret, 180, Luke Marcelina, 368, Louis Engel, 48, Mailing Chun, 46, Nikhil Krukecha, 57, Asha Uche Roseberg, 36, and Maurice Lake, 187. Moving on to the SDM, Benjamin Ortega, 288, Arthur Butte, 32, Raymond Matzer, 39, James Busby, 10, Elvis Lewis, 47. Moving on to the National Alliance. Silveria Jacobs, 896. Christoph Emanuel, 571. Rudolph Samuel, 198. Artwell Irian, 352. Anna Rabess Richardson, 188. Hyacinth Richardson, 151. George Pantaflet, 100. Rene Violinus, 103. Egbert Chirendi Duran, 328. Solange Ludmilla York Duncan, 157. Romeo Pantaflet, 107. Leonard Priest, 136. Jimmy Challenger, 37. Herbert Martina, 124. Lucretia Morales, 8. Nicarta O. Travis McQuilkin, 43. Leroy W. Vlon, 47. Robert Budica, 41. Roberta Ira Arundel, 20. Dennison Phillips, 43. Oswald Bell, 14. Jelani Gums, 30. William Marlin, 445. Moving on to the PPA. 
Gracita Arundel, 92. Duncan von Heinigen, 55. Les Allen Brown, 19. Roel Hackmott, 13. Susanna Velasquez, 27. Miriam Wigman, 23. Haiti Peterson, 15. Armando Gums, 7. Fritz Richardson, 4. Elwaldo Arundel, 9. Don Hughes, 16. Moving on to the U.S. party. France Richardson, 315. Melissa Arundel Doncher, 91. Maria Boncampus Milanis, 240. Rolando Bryson, 278. Valia Lake Pantaflet, 186. Lloyd Paul, 75. Richanel Brich, 76. Lyndon Lewis, 102. Lisa Alexander, 62. Wilfred Williams, 11. Elvis Flanders, 133. Martin Wilson, 12. Hillary Williams, 34. Curtis Thomas, 32. Delphine Brooks Martinboro, 13. Sergio Bryson, 22. Early Charlemagne, 4. Arthur Lambrex, 32. Cecil Nicholas, 70. Moving on to the SMCP. Wycliffe Smith, 577. Keith Gittens, 97. Mulrose Toulon Spronsper, 36. Claude Peterson, 136. Beverly Gibbs, 13. Benjamin Bell, 103. Francis Mauricia Peterson, 28. Christian President, 27. Michael Somersall, 26. Richard Patrick, 48. Mary Luz Rattan Paolo, 28. Albert Butte, Alberto Butte, 62. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the results, the preliminary results individual results per political party. And again, I would like to summarize the amount of votes per party for the United Democrats. That will amount to an amount of 5,749. The SDM, 416. National Alliance, 4,139. PPA, 280. The U.S. Party, 1,788, and the SMCP, 1,181, which is a total of 13,553, bringing the results, the turnout, to 62%. I would like to inform you that with these preliminary results, I have gotten off the phone with His Excellency Eugene Holliday, and I have apprised him of how St. Martin has spoken, the preliminary results, and as such, the governor is also aware of that. As I've indicated, these are preliminary results. We will post these results on the websites. However, as the law prescribes, five days after the election night, a uh, meeting, a public meeting will be held where all eligible voters are allowed to be present while we validate the results. Now, as you know, Five days from now would fall in a weekend. However, as the law prescribes, that, that public meeting will be held on the first following business day, which will be March 5th, and it will be held here in the House of Parliament at 10 a.m.